1863 was a momentous year regarding American freedom. On January 1, 1863, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation that freed slaves. On July 3, 1863, the Union Army won the Battle of Gettysburg and helped secure that freedom. Less than a month later, on July 30th, an individual was born whose innovations would enable Americans of all walks of life to enjoy that freedom in a way never imagined. I will build a car for the multitudes. It shall be large enough for the family, but small enough for the unskilled individual to operate easily and care for, and it shall be light in weight that it may be economical in maintenance. But it also shall be so low in price that even the man of moderate means may own one and enjoy it with his family in the happy hours spent in God's great open spaces. And so began Henry Ford's quest that eventually transformed the lives of Americans. The Model T was born. The American economy, landscape, and way of living would never be the same. At the time Henry Ford was thinking about creating an inexpensive gas-powered automobile, most Americans were still on the farm. The American population was mostly rural, and most people never traveled more than 20 miles from their home. Although there were steam-powered engines as early as 1769, the main way of getting from one place to another on a day-to-day -day basis was the horse and buggy. By 1903, there were only 8,000 cars in the United States, and less than 150 miles of paved road. Things were changing in the cities, however. Electricity was more available, electric trolley cars provided local transportation, and people in the city were enjoying more leisure time. Families entertained themselves with lawn games like croquet, or gathered around the piano or pianola for a sing-along. The horseless carriage had just arrived on the scene in America, but arguments were made that but for the smell, horses were better for travel. It was during this time that Henry Ford had an idea for a new model of car that had never been seen before. Henry Ford grew up in rural Michigan and hated the drudgery of farm life. He sought to build a machine that was as rugged and tough as farm life, but just as durable for city life. A car that combined large size and light weight. Ford became obsessed in his quest to simplify, design, use better material, and cut the weight of current automobiles while still making it affordable for the masses. On September 24, 1908, Ford unveiled his dream and the first Model T was introduced. Henry Ford's vision to build a car to serve as daily transportation for city dwellers, a new kind of workhorse for farmers, and the key to freedom for anyone, anywhere was now a reality. Ford said, I think we've got something here, and he was right. The Model T's greatest attribute was its simplicity. As the advertising slogan stated, the Model T was a high-priced quality and a low-priced car. The Model T was with a great demand, and Ford's dilemma of how to produce enough cars was the first of many innovations brought about by the Model T. The Model T was initially built by one crew from the frame up. In order to increase the output, Ford tried assigning one job per man and moving the men from car to car. He further developed this process and saved time by moving the car instead of the men. This was Ford's first attempt at the moving assembly line, an innovation which we still use today. During the first year of production, 308 Model Ts were built. This was hardly enough to meet the demand of 10,067 Model Ts sold at a cost of $780 for the touring car and $680 for the Roadster. The moving assembly line helped speed up the process of production, but as demand essentially doubled each year, Ford still worked to find more efficient processes. By 1910, the moving assembly line, initially used in meatpacking and first introduced to the automobile industry by Ford, was combined with the concept of interchangeable parts. This combination of mechanized moving parts and job specialization finally allowed Ford to make cars at a steady pace in a way that continually lowered the price. Ford created the world's largest factory in 1910 at Highland Park, often called the Crystal Palace because of its innovative use of skylights. In 1913, Highland Park had 13,000 employees, and by 1914, Ford was selling 250,000 cars per year. The Model T was living up to Ford's vision. It could be adapted to many uses, such as portable power on the farm, a delivery van for rural mail carriers, or even a car for Saturday night dates. Model Ts were turned into taxis, trucks, fire engines, ambulances, and police cars. The Model T was even used in the crazy sport of auto polo. 
dreamed up by a Ford dealer in Wichita, Kansas, the Model T took the place of polo ponies. Model T racing also developed into a more respected sport. Ford's early development of race cars is a forerunner to the successful Ford racing programs of today. It was in Model T racing that Ford motorsports legend like Bill France Sr., founder of NASCAR, and Wally Parks, founder of the National Hot Rod Association, got their start. I met with Jack Roush, former Ford employee and the owner and founder of Ford's largest NASCAR team, Roush Fenway Racing. Over the years, we've uh, restored uh, Ford products. This uh, car in front of me now is a Ford Model T Sportster. It uh, was Henry's, uh, Henry's version of a sports car. Ford's efficient mass production system was exceedingly tedious and boring to the workers assembling the automobiles. The Highland Park plant had a 370% quit rate and over 10% absenteeism, sometimes called Fordites. In order to keep his workers working and partially in response to a workers' right group, industrial workers of the world threatening strike, Ford announced a pay increase from $2.34 to $5 per day and reduced the workday from 9 hours to 8. The melting pot of Highland Park was made up of many first-generation immigrants who were now given English lessons and skills to budget and save their paychecks. Ford commented he was building men as well as automobiles. The $5 day drove wages up around the country as other industries had to compete with Ford to recruit and maintain a strong workforce. It also allowed the automobile workers to actually buy the product they were making for the first time as their wages increased and the cost of the basic Model T dropped drastically. In early 2009, I contacted Ford Motor Company regarding National History Day and was granted an interview with Edsel Ford, great-grandson of Henry Ford I, and current member of the Ford Board of Directors. Well, it was really interesting because, you know, he was passionate about his laborers. Um, I think he really believed that, that his laborers were a part of his uh, extended family. The, the famous $5 a day really was the beginning of the African-American migration from the South uh, to Detroit. As workers bought cars and became more mobile, there was a shift in living patterns. The Model T and mass production allowed people to move from the farm to the cities where manufacturing jobs awaited. The isolation of rural life was ending due to horsepower of a new sort. The landscape was changing as more cars hit the rural paths of America. When the Model T was introduced in 1908, the United States had fewer than 200,000 automobiles. By 1912, there were over a million cars on the road, and by 1923, there were over 2,011,125 cars produced worldwide. Although there were more cars, Paved roads were the exception, not the rule. Dirt roads were sometimes rutted and sometimes impassable. The popularity of the Model T brought these poor conditions up to speed, and road construction became a priority in the 1920s. A national highway system and the Federal Highway Commission soon followed. The automobile was becoming a necessity, and the country was changing to accommodate it. As suburbs developed, home design changed to add garages and carports, and shopping centers and gas stations sprung up along new roads. So automobiles gave mobility that nothing else did, and it meant that cheap land on the outskirts of town was now available for housing. The Tin Lizzie also indirectly led to success in World War I as Ford's pioneering methods could turn out needed materials more quickly than the enemy. The Highland Park plant manufactured steel helmets, ammunition boxes, armor plating, airplane engines, tractors, and gas masks. The Ford Motor Company produced 5,745 ambulances for the U.S. Army Medical Corps, and early World War I tanks used Model T engines. Model T production finally ended in May 1927, after a 19-year production run and 15 million Model Ts produced. The Model T had become part of American culture, nicknamed the Tin Lizzie, Fliver, and Little Henry. Many jokes, films, and music was written about the Model T. The unpretentious and reliable Model T gave us the steering wheel on the left side and drove the American population over improved roads and highway systems into a life that is very recognizable today. Thanks to the Model T, America has become a mobile society. 
John Keats, automotive writer, wrote that the Model T changed our dress, manners, social customs, vacation habits, the shape of our cities, customer purchasing patterns, and common tastes. The 20th century in America was changed more by the Model T than any other product. His little old Ford did ramble right along. The little old Ford did ramble right along. The gas burned out in the big machine. But the darn little Ford don't need gasoline.